Good morning, everybody. I hope today finds you well. Um, I'm going to covet your prayers. It hasn't been the best day for me. Um, I, I don't think it's the seasonal effectiveness disorder because of the, the weather, but I, I, I do know that there's just some factors in my life that I'm struggling with and I'm working on. Uh, and, and so I covet your prayers. You know, um, pray for preachers. Pray for humility of all believers. Pray um, constantly for those who are, are being persecuted even as we speak. Pray constantly uh, for strength for those who, who lead, whether they're elders or deacons or, or whoever else may be uh, within the church. Pray at all times for the saints. That's what the Bible urges us to do. And so, you know, I'm, I'm starting today's video with that. And I hope it, it leads well into this, is something that's been on my heart, and I've discussed this with many brothers in Christ. Um, some of us got together and prayed about this last night, and one of the topics of discussion that came up was that, you know, we as believers live as though this life is all there is. Believers live as though this is the only thing. This isn't. This is a broken world. It was a good world. God called it very good in the very beginning. And there's things about it that are wonderful. All gifts of God. But too many of us live as if this is the only thing. This is not our home. This is not our life. We are going to be parted someday. From our spouses, whom many of us have a gift of God and a spouse. We're going to be parted someday by death. Our children will grow up and leave and begin families of their own. Of their own. Our, our homes. Uh, someday, many of us will be unable to live in the homes we live in because they're just too much for us. Our jobs, as much satisfaction as some of us have in them, we're going to have to retire or we'll get too old. And someday our hearts will stop beating. Too many believers live as if this is all there is. The only thing that matters in this life is Jesus Christ. I am married. And the only thing that matters in my marriage is Jesus Christ. And here's what I mean by that. In my marriage, my goal is not to be merely a good husband, but to see my wife alongside me in heaven someday. As a parent, my goal is not to raise good and moral children. My job and, and my goal and my desire is to see four young men who know Jesus Christ because they will face eternity just as I will. As a neighbor, my, my desire, my goal is to see my neighbors come to know Christ because someday they will meet him face to face and we are only promised this moment in time that we have right now. We are promised no more than what we have. So we have to stop living as if all there, this is all there is. Listen to what Paul writes to the Philippians. Paul, writing this from prison, listen to what he says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write to you again about this is no trouble for me. It is a protection for you. Watch out for dogs. Watch out for evil workers. Watch out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are of the circumcision, the ones who serve the Spirit of God. Boast in Christ Jesus and do not put confidence in the flesh. You see, there's no confidence in, confidence in this, in the works we do, in the things we can accomplish. He's speaking specifically of those trying to convince people to be circumcised, but this fits to this purpose. Although I once also had confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he has grounds for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew born of Hebrews, regarding the law of Pharisee, regarding zeal persecuting the church, regarding the righteousness that is in the law, blameless. Paul is listing his own confidence and confidence credentials within the flesh but everything that was a gain to me i have considered it a loss the word he uses loss 
is actually kaka, doo-doo. That's what it means. I consider this all to be garbage because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. You see, everything he accomplished in this life, he considers it to be nothing because of Knowing Jesus Christ, knowing Jesus Christ is the reason for it all. If you have a family, Christ gave it to you, and your role in that family is to make sure your family knows Christ. If you have a job, you're supposed to be a worker for Christ. If you live in a neighborhood, you're supposed to be a neighbor for Christ. It is all for and about Him. Anything less, we are just counting off time. In the end of all things, when we meet the creator of the universe, it's not going to matter what job you had. It's not going to matter how well your marriage was. It's not going to matter how good you were at your job or, or how your kids acted in public. It's going to matter that you knew Jesus Christ or not. You're either going to be judged according to knowing Jesus Christ personally, or you're going to be judged according to the law. And as far as the law is concerned, every single one of us, myself and you, we're all guilty. We are judged according to the righteousness of Christ or according to our deeds by the law. There is no middle ground. And many of us are facing this day in and day out. Death is just around the corner. We are, are given no more than what we have. Let us use it all for the glory of God. Every single bit of it. Now listen to this. Because of him, because of Jesus. I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them filth. There's that word. Rubbish. Kaka. Doo-doo. It's a bad word. It's not going to appear in most of our translations the way it's written in the Greek. Paul used the most despicable word he could for all of his accomplishments. He considered them to be nothing in comparison with knowing Jesus. Listen, I consider them all to be filth so that I may gain Christ. And be found in him not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. That should be what we are straining for, he goes on with this. Listen, not that I've already reached the goal or am already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. It's all about him. He hasn't attained it in this life. He has now. He's gone to his reward. And I haven't attained it. And neither have you. But we need to be straining towards it constantly. This world is not our home. We are pilgrims. We are foreigners. The real estate we have will pass away, but Jesus Christ and your soul is forever. Where are you going to spend eternity? Focus on it now. Are you going to spend eternity in your flesh? Then keep focusing. Enjoy your reward because that's all you get. This is all you get if you're focused on this life. Enjoy it while you can. But all of us who should, we should, if we call Christ Jesus our Lord, all of us are straining towards that goal. If we preserve one more day of our life, what does it matter if we are not living for Christ? What does it matter if we are not sharing Christ? What does it matter if we are not living for him? If we are not going out and, and, and making a testimony of his greatness? If we're hiding away, what does it matter? Strain towards the goal. Listen to this. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward, or, or some translations, straining toward the goal to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ. Therefore, all who are mature should think this way. If you don't think this way, you're not mature in Christ. 
And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this to you also. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Church, it's time we live to our calling. Stop being afraid of the world. The world can't do anything to us. The least it could do is kill us. And if, it, and if we die, it's an express ticket home. We shouldn't be afraid of leaving things behind. Let us use this and every other moment from this point forward for the purpose of Christ. Let us raise our kids and our grandkids. Let us love our spouses. Let us love our neighbors. Let us love our jobs. Let us do all things for the glory of God because that is what it's for. Strain towards the goal. Seek Christ in all things. Get into your word. Know God's will. You can't speak about God being silent if you never open this up. Don't rely on me. Don't take my word for it. Look into the scriptures. Understand what God's word has for you. Church, this isn't about us. This is about Jesus Christ. And nothing the world can do to us, whether imprisonment or torture or death, can separate us from the love of Christ. Jesus says, he who seeks to save his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake. This is Jesus speaking. Only then he will find it. The riches of this world, the wealth of this world is passing away. Everything of this world is passing away. But strain towards the goal of Jesus Christ. Conform everything you do to him. And watch how the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I'm speaking the scriptures to you folks. Brother Miles, I appreciate your encouragement. Stay focused on Jesus. Love your spouses and your kids and your grandkids and your neighbors and your co-workers and the people at the grocery store and the guy who cut you off this morning while you were driving and the guy who's driving too slow or the guy who's driving too fast or whatever else may be. Love everyone as if Christ was coming back today. Show the love of Christ and bring as many with you as possible through your example through Christ. And let us watch how the world has changed. We're not going to change it in policy in Washington or at the State House or, or at the City Hall. We are going to change it through our homes. We're going to change it through our lives. We are going to do everything as we do it for Christ Jesus. God bless you. And if you have any other questions, if you have any other comments, I'd love to hear what you have to say. But let us strain towards that goal together. God bless you. God keep you. May he bless you.